Can a single part fan duct outperform two, three, four, or even five ports? And is it best to point the air towards the nozzle or to the side of the nozzle? And what happens if we remove the duct completely? After testing quite a few high-speed printers, there doesn't seem to be any consistency in the way they've chosen to cool the parts. Some have two ports, some have three. Some have air from one side, some have air from many sides. Some even have air going away from the parts for some reason. I'd like to see if we can find the sweet spot by comparing one, two, three, four, and even more ducts on some extreme overhangs and bridges for the best results on high-speed printers. So stick around. I'll be using the FL Sun T1 today because this printer has a CPAP style fan. So we're going to be able to take the levels from a speed perspective to the extreme, but also from the airflow perspective and pressure as well. But I'd also like to install new ducts on the Chidi Q1 Pro because it has this kind of offset and disproportionate cooling, just like the Bamboo X1C did before upgrading it to the Bichu Panda Jet with the four more balanced ducts. This is the stock duct and it does not make much sense to me. We have air only coming from the back and it's set slightly to each side of the nozzle. And then there are these strange relief ports which send air away from the parts as well. My best guess at this point is that this was done because the fan at 100% was sending too much air from the back and causing quality issues during their testing. This works, but I think it is too restrictive and too noisy and I think we can do better. So to make our own versions, we just need some way to get the air from here to here gradually and some way to mount it. I've created a sketch for the mouth of the ducts and then lofted from the hose side to the mouth along the center line. Then I did that a couple more times and then combined the parts together and then I can hollow the shape out. I've also lofted some sturdy mounting points as well so it's nice and stable on the printer. After removing the supports, this is what we're left with and these are pretty nice actually. I didn't expect them to turn out this well, especially because they only have a 0.7 millimeter wall thickness. The stock duct is pretty light and it comes in at 14.2 grams. The single lofted duct is 3.99 grams. The double lofted is 6.61 grams. The triple lofted is 6.1 grams. I also have this prototype version which has five ducts and it comes in at 7.53 grams. I polled the community to see what you thought about ducts and the first poll I asked how many ducts was best. Most people felt that three or more produced a better result over one and two with 55% of the people thinking three plus. In the second poll I wanted to know what you thought about the air placement. Should it be directed at the nozzle? Should it be directed at itself? Or should it be directed to create a sort of vortex flow around the nozzle? Most people by quite a good margin seem to think that the vortex style would be the best option. There's something else and I didn't poll about this, but the angle of approach, should it come across the surface or should it be directed more downward? My designs today were more of an attempt at a horizontal setup, but let me know whether you think that was a good idea or not. I'll be using high speed PLA for the test today and I'll be running the printer with accelerations and speeds at pretty high numbers. And I've changed the minimum print speed to 90 millimeters per second. So hopefully cooling does become a bit of a problem. We'll run a bridge test and an overhang test for each. And for the bridge test, I'll position it going across the X direction. Bridging is pretty important to have a successful clean print, but it also slows the print down quite a bit. So I have a faster bridge set at 80 millimeters per second for the external and 120 for the internal parts of the bridge. All of these tests are gonna be 0.2 millimeters for layer height, and that's gonna give us a little less overlap on the previous layers for overhangs. And I thought I would start out with something maybe a little unusual which is no duct whatsoever. There's gonna be a ton of air being pumped out from the back here. Mm -hmm. 
I'll go ahead and mount the stock ductwork back on there and then I will redo the vibration calibration as well. This one is the single ported duct and it is taking the air which comes straight down and guiding it to be more horizontal. I would hope that it performs better than the no duct, but I don't have high expectations for it. I also want to point out that this printer has the nozzle exposed. I think it needs to have some protection because of the amount of air coming across and because the air moving along the nozzle causes it to cool rapidly. And because of that, it's also causing the air from the fan to be warmed up, which could also negate some of the cooling capability of this fan. Next up, we have the double ducted version, and this is quite a bit more common, but going back to a previous video testing airflow, I found that the Creality printer with three ducts performed the best on overhangs. It might not be quite so simple because we also need to think about where the air is being placed and where it is going, but it's a good indication that more could be better. While this one was running, I noticed something a little bit different, and that was lots of air was coming out of the front and also towards the back as well. Nothing to the sides at all. Now we have the tri-ducted version, which I think just looks amazing. And it reminds me a little bit of talons or maybe horns on a triceratops, but with better airflow. I'm hopeful with this one because it should place the air fairly evenly around all sides of the nozzle. And since the rear duct had a little bit more direct path, I've actually made that one smaller. Ideally, I'd be able to use some software to check all this, but I don't have one that can simulate airflow at the moment. And last, it is the Sentinel. This one has the addition of a sort of auxiliary fan at the back, which is set a little bit further away from the nozzle, and it's gonna be a little bit slimmer, a little bit narrower. Along with that, I also have four ducts which are not pointed directly at the nozzle, but rather slightly off center. The hope is with this design that it's gonna place cool air around the nozzle without cooling the nozzle as much, and the extra back fan will help to cool the entire part to prepare for the next layer. Even though it looks bulky, this one is actually still pretty light and it's still well below the stock duct in weight. I also ran a test by taping off the blower at the back and using this as a four long duct inversion to see if it had any impact at all. Now we have some usable results, but I want something a little bit more definitive. So what I'll do is kick it up a few notches by making the overhangs even more severe. So I've created this, which has five, 10, and 15 degrees off of horizontal. And this test begins where the other one ended. I'm also reducing the fan speed to 75% from 100%. And that should give us an indication if the placement of the air is really important. All of our test pieces are finished and this white filament is really tough to see any defects. So I'm gonna lightly spray them with some flat gray primer, which does a really good job of highlighting any issues. To see which ducks came out on top, I'm ranking them from the worst to the best. The worst will get a score of one and then we'll work our way up from there. So I have positioned them now from the worst to the best and this is honestly tougher than I thought it was gonna be. Now I think it's important to mention that for the bridge test, I only tested the bridge in one direction. So testing it at 90 degrees or at another angle would probably produce a little bit different results for some of these at least. So what I'll do is half the score for the bridge test so it contributes less to the overall. For the bridges, we had no duct in last place, two ducts directly opposing each other, then the stock duct, and then a single duct, then five ducts, then four, and then the three came in best for the bridge test. For the basic overhangs, we had no duct again in last place, then we had the stock duct, then a single duct, then two ducts, then five ducts, and then three and four seemed to be pretty close and they were a tie. It was just a little bit too hard to say one beat out the other on that test. I was gonna rank the severe overhangs test from worst to best overall, but I actually think it's better to break this one down by each individual angle on each side instead and give each one a ranking where the best result is five and the worst result is one. This is hopefully gonna give us a far more accurate rating and it's gonna be less subjective as well. And I think this is important because some of them have one side that's really good, but the other sides are pretty bad. What I'll do is then summarize all those numbers and then they can be ranked from worst to best, just like the previous tests. 
we have the no duct in last place. It did well on some of the overhangs and extremely poorly on others. It's not really placing the air as much as it is just spewing it all over the place. Next, we have the stock duct. And again, it did pretty well on some of the tests and extremely poorly on others, just like the last one. I still don't really get why these relief areas are in here. It just seems like a waste of perfectly good air. Next up came the two ducted version. And here, I think I could have done a bit more because I was going based off of other designs that I've seen with each mouth opposing each other exactly. And in this case, the air has really nowhere to go. So it ends up shooting air forward and back and also down when it can. And that was apparent during the bridge test because too much air was forcing those bridges down rather than trying to cool it across the surface. Next up, we have the single ducted version, and this one did better than I expected. It certainly had a place for the warm air to escape to, and for the bridge testing, it moved the air nicely along the surface as well. But unfortunately, it didn't provide adequate cooling from all sides on those overhang tests. Next up, we had the five ducted Sentinel. This one could have probably done better. I did not do a good enough job of balancing the flow in the design, and it ended up sending a lot of air from the back and not as much from each of the other four ducts. Next, we had the four ducted version, which was just the five, and I put duct tape over the rear auxiliary port. This one did better than the last one by just a small margin. Both the five and the four version are sending streams of air slightly off center from the nozzle, and they're going towards each other as well, which is ending up creating a more turbulent flow. And with the best overall score, we have the three ducted version. This one has a few things going for it. It's much more balanced than the five ducted version. The airflow is also creating more of a vortex effect with these streams of air that can combine with each other. Air is also being directed around the nozzle and less going directly towards the nozzle. And there's also enough of a place for the warm air to escape fairly evenly. And that could be felt during the print where I put my hand around there and I could feel warm air coming out from all sides. So three is the overall winner. So in my testing, more does seem to be better, but at a certain point, it's not necessarily better. This may also come down to the positioning of the airflow, or the airstream. This one here with the three was offset to each side of the nozzle, creating this type of a vortex effect, and it seemed to provide the best results. I would also like to try this on four and five, maybe in a future video, but there is still hope for number two as well. We could do the exact same thing, offsetting these two ports to each side of the nozzle just slightly. That would give the warmed air a place to go and create more of an effect just like this one had. All of this testing has raised a whole bunch more questions in my mind, like is the oval port the right shape? Should it be more rectangular? How wide should these be? Maybe a teardrop shape is better. Is this really large swooping shape really necessary? Exactly where in Z should this be pointed? Should it be very horizontal or even more horizontal than I had it set up? And should these be brought even closer to the nozzle so that we have even better cooling capability right at the tip of the nozzle where the material is being extruded? None of these are, of course, perfection. So what I've done is I've linked these for you to download and test them yourself. I've also created a template file if you want to create your own. And I'd also like to send out a challenge to anyone who thinks that they can do better. Send me your design, I'll print it and run the test with the goal of having the best overall cooling. If you're enjoying this type of content, make sure you like and subscribe and don't forget that notification bell as well. All of that really helps to support this channel. Thank you to each of my patrons for supporting this channel and making these videos possible as well. And of course, if you wanna help support this channel as well, there is a link down there below. Take care, I hope you enjoy the video and we will see you on the next one.